Join me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can be here tonight. And Lord, we ask for your wisdom upon all of the appointed leaders, Lord, all the representatives. Father, give them your sense of leading. Help them to know how to lead this city well, Lord, and to do so in honor of you. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be here and to be a free people. It's in the name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Usually it's supposed to have everything up there. She'll figure it out. Nothing's on here. Thank God we have this backup. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Daniel DeGraff. Here. Jake Parks. Here. Leo Zuber. Here. Vice Mayor Mike Restucia. Present. Mayor Dean Euchre. Here. Do we need to go over public discussion yeah. again? Yep. Yeah, because you have to do it now that this is regular. Okay. Right there. This time is provided to the public to address the city council on items not on the agenda. If you desire to speak, please address Mr. Mayor, and upon being recognized, come forward to the podium and state your name and address before proceeding in your subject matter. Anybody? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, thanks for the invite. Uh, my name is Chief Reese, and I'm with the California National Guard Youth and Community Programs Task Force, located at 700 East Roth Road in Lathrop. Uh, here to provide just a quick uh, uh, synopsis of information regarding a new resource to the city of Ripon. Uh, and I actually have two products of San Joaquin County with me today. My kid from Ripon that I have in the academy right now is sick, so we have him quarantined, uh, and you don't want to meet him tonight. So, uh, But again, my name is Chief Reese, and I'm the Recruiting Placement and Mentoring Supervisor for the Discovery Challenge Academy, and we are a resource for the at-risk youth uh, in the city of Ripon. The at-risk youth who are behind in credits or at risk of not dropping out, or excuse me, of not graduating on time, the dropouts in the community. So I work with, uh, with high school counselors, principals, vice principals, with law enforcement officials, uh, probation officers, and so forth to reach out to those individuals between 16 and 18 years old who may not be on the right track, who may be behind in credits again or at risk of dropping out. So these two young men, uh, they can kind of speak for themselves, but prior to our academy, uh, they were not on the right track. And currently they're in week 10 of the academy, and so far the product is great. Uh, so prior to the academy, I'm not sure if their microphones are on, I'm going to have Herrera just kind of tell you his GPA and kind of what his life was like prior to our academy. Probably can, come up here. could you please yeah, just come up and, and then you're on the, t we're being taped and stuff. Uh, so my name is Austin Herrera. Uh, they refer to us as uh, cadets, so I'm Cadet Herrera. Um, my GPA is a 4.0. And uh, before I came to this academy, I was uh, enrolled in school all throughout high school. And senior year is when I kind of started struggling. And I wasn't really finishing my work or staying on track, kind of just getting into trouble, into trouble a lot. And uh, I ended up dropping out actually halfway through my senior year, and so I wasn't able to graduate with my class. And even I signed up for independent studies towards the end of the year, and um, I still wasn't able to finish my work just because I had other issues uh, at home and stuff. And um, I was just a really rebellious kid, and I really just didn't care. And um, when I got this opportunity from a close friend that was doing the same thing as me, first class, he. Uh, tried really hard sending me paperwork through the program um, to get me to come here and so I made the or I chose to come here by myself I'm 18 years old I'm going to be 19 next month and um, when I enrolled in this program I didn't really know what to expect and um, after about the first month I noticed a drastic change in my attitude how I kind of just approached different obstacles in my life especially with discipline Discipline and patience was a very hard thing for me to learn. And um, now it's all coming naturally for me. I see myself, I never thought of a future for myself. I just thought, I just was the normal kid that was like, I don't want to go to college. I don't, I mean, I just didn't really have anything for me. I didn't know what I wanted to be. But now I have a whole, I have a whole, they help you, they help set us up with PRAP, which is a post residential action plan for after this program. And now I'm more determined than ever to, 
start off after I graduate from here, go to MJC in Modesto and uh, do their nursing program and become a nurse through that. And um, just also just with the service community that we do, I really want to just get involved with more of that when I get out of here and being a leader and helping others. And um, they've given me the opportunity to be able to join student council, which I thought was a very big step in being a leader. Um, I actually am a secretary for uh, our school. There's the president and vice president, obviously, and then me as a secretary and uh, I believe six representatives. And that was something that really helped me get more motivated about myself to be able to accomplish tasks that need to get done and hearing other, being able to hear other people's issues and what I can do to change it was a really big thing in my life that was like, this is a step to take. I felt like it was a step that I needed to take for myself because it was very, I didn't think I could do it, but now I know I can do it. And this place gives us a lot of motivation and drive to do what we need to do to get done. <laughs> So that's just one story. I'm going to share one quick, one last story with you, and then I'll, I'll close up. So. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Christian Galetto, known by the Academy as Cadet Galetto. Um, so before coming to the Academy, my GPA was a 0 0.7. And um, I struggled all throughout high school. I'm a, currently a senior. But going into this Academy and going through the school system there, I now have a 4.0. It's uh, an A in all of my classes. DCA has really taught me how to cope with my emotions. Um, I always found myself like getting lost while trying to do homework. I always had these distractions. DCA has really set aside all those distractions so that way I could focus on what's most important. Self-discipline, education, physical excellence. Um, the, the program itself is challenging, but if you make it past the first two weeks, there's things called phasing. And um, acclimation phase is the hardest. They teach you the standards and what is uh, required by the program. And after that, it's all just to help you out. The, after the first two weeks, you go into red phase. Red phase uh, helps you cope with emotional distress, it helps you academically. And then white phase, you get um, privileges, such as like, uh, you get more time to do stuff, you get more personal time, stuff like that. Um, all in all, the program is a one in a lifetime opportunity. I had the, the opportunity to join it last year, but I didn't take it too seriously because I thought I knew everything and I could just make it through high school, slacking off, not doing my work. And um, it was kind of like a last option thing. But realizing that I was messing up and that I would have no future doing what I was doing, I applied for this year's cycle. And um, I just got to say, it's changed my life. It really has. Um, I see things in a different light. I'm thankful for everything that I have now. There's no other way to put this rather than if I didn't come to the program, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I'd probably still be lazy, sitting on my butt, not doing much. And um, the service to communities really make you feel good because you're giving back to people that help you out. And it's just a great program and all. There's nothing bad I can say about it. And I'm not paying then. Uh, so in closing, I just want to say thank you uh, for the opportunity to come and speak. Uh, my information is, is on the, the screen there. I would invite anybody in the community, the chief of police, uh, any of your officers to come out and see the program for yourselves. We're located at the Sharp Army Depot uh, there in Lathrop, but we are a resource. Uh, you know, the, the students who are truant, uh, they're not in school. They're out in your community doing something probably not productive. So we are a resource for your community. The good news is after five and a half months of the residential program, these students come right back here to your community with their heads on straight, with more resources to be employable, to more resources to get enrolled back in their high schools, to do uh, better in school, more resources to get enrolled in a two-year college and be productive citizens. We get all of our funding, 75% uh, of our funding comes from the federal government, 25% comes from the state. There's no cost to the families for tuition of this program.
The only thing that the families would have to pay for is a small packing list, but we have a nonprofit foundation that covers all of that if they cannot provide. It's a bipartisan issue. We have uh, Congress Member Jeff Denham uh, on our Youth Challenge Caucus, as well as Congress Member Jerry McNerney. So we have bipartisan support because the youth of our nation is a bipartisan issue. So thank you for, so much for your time. Please write down my information, but if there's any questions, I'd love to answer them. Sir. Do you, I, I take it you have a website? Yes, sir. Uh, most commonly on Facebook now. We do have a website. It's, uh, it's uh, discoverychallengeacademy.com. However, if you look on Facebook as well, uh, you, you'll see more updates of current events and pictures and so forth. Well, what I was wondering is, could we put that website on our website so people could come to our website and then go to their website? Is that something that we could do? Into I mean, adding things. It sounds like a great program, and uh, I would like to say, "Hooya, you two young men, and congratulations." The vice mayor would like to say something. I, guess. I would just like to say something, uh, Warren Officer. Thank you so much, and and the presentation really is. A, I mean, you can spend an hour and can't get everything out to everybody, and the presentation you made to us before was great about asking for volunteers and all that. So I would encourage anybody that's really interested to know more about the program, get all the officer Reese, because it's it's an amazing program and we had twenty people in the room and nobody had heard about it before. So that's why I invited you and hopefully more people will know about your, your program. So congratulations and thank you. Of course. Thank you, sir. And that's and that's my goal is to make as many people know about the program as possible. And a, a last thing that I can offer to the city of Ripon is those community service hours. So Chief Police, uh, I know that there is always a need for community service in the area. Uh, I will show up with an army of 135 young men and women uh, that are just ready to work and ready to, to give back to the community that's supporting them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Approval of the minutes. I'll move to approve. I'll second. If I can figure it out. Well, I'll go here. Figure okay, mover. I got it. Passes with a 5 0. Approval of the agenda as posted. This is where I give, make my list, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? She has them all. I know, but she's still Oh, I have a few items to pull. You ready? Yes. 1.1B, 1.2A, 1.2E, 1.3C, 1.3D, and last but not least, 1.4C. Okay, Mike. I have one to pull. 1.2D, please. Which is in between A and E. We'll vote. Do we, so that, uh, now we can move, move to approve the agenda as amended. Yep. Oh, what'd she say? They're still working. Yep. They're pulling them all off. Yeah, but we can vote on one. the. No, 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 no. You don't want to screw yeah, up the system. Yeah. Oh. Trisha will get mad at you. No, because mm -hmm. she controls too much. That is true. Come back. Well, in the meantime, I guess we can. Why, Chief? Why are you wearing a suit today? Because he looks good. That's why. I didn't uh, say he looked uh, bad. I'm always aiming to impress, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I think I can do. And I am impressed, by the way. Thank you. It doesn't take much to keep it alive. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I'll be impressed when he doesn't wear a Hawaiian There's got to be a committee to put him on. Okay, you ready? I'm on it. Okay. All right. I will move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Oh, I got to. Yeah, you got to uh, click the button. Mike's got to click his button. 
Okay. Why hasn't everybody voted? We're waiting on you. Huh? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Voted. Okay, pass with a 5-0. Okay, we'll... Um, now we do the consent yeah. agenda as amended, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I'll so, move to approve the consent agenda as amended. I'm waiting for my mover box to show up. There it is. How come you got to move it? I didn't even get it in. I didn't mean to, so I thought you had already clicked it. I know, but I voted, but I didn't get a push in there. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Now we go to the items. No, but she hasn't done her thing yet. Yeah, motion. 1.2. No, 1.1D. Well, well, wait. Oh, is the vote done? Yeah, it is. We are? Okay. 1.1B. Um, 1. 1 My only question is, when I looked at that report, the numbers didn't add up. Did that get fixed? Yes. Uh, we're working with uh, waste management. Uh, they inadvertently had some of the numbers on there from previous the previous franchise fees they paid us. So we're working with them to get that. Uh, so should we not approve this and it'll be on next month? The, the dollar amount is correct. It's just the information I think that was in the left hand column. So the dollar that went over in one column matches the amount that we received from them, the other does not. So we're just going to get the backup fixed. So you can still approve it. What? The first column had one set of numbers, the second column had a different set of numbers. And then underneath where it was how much we got reimbursed, the numbers were the same. And that's the amount that we received. So regardless of what the top number said, we got the right amount of money. That's correct. Okay. I just want to, because I couldn't make those work. <laughs> do we do these as we go then? Yeah. Approve yeah. them? Uh, mm -hmm. We can do them all together. Yeah. Okay. Unless, yeah, okay. 1.2A. 1.2A. Yeah, Michael, what is that? I mean, we're paying somebody $10,000, and what, what's, I don't remember that coming to us before. Did it? Uh, yes, it, it did. Um, er Provost and Pritchard is preparing the urban water management plan. So this is a requirement by the state of California to be updated every five years for, um, for, for water suppliers of our size. So it, it's just a, a, a document we use to make sure there's enough water supply to meet the future demand of, of the city. The, the other thing that's important about this is in 2009, the state p passed a law that requires cities to um, have a certain amount of water conservation is different than what, ha what was required during the drought. Uh, the law in 2009 stated you had to have a 20% per capita water uh, reduction by 2020. So this report will um, document what our conservation is and help us make sure we're meeting those state requirements. Okay, so at the time we get the report, we can find out what the 20% is of? Yes. Okay, <coughs> I'll, I'll wait. Okay, do we want Mike to do his 1.2D sure. because it's in between these yeah. two? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm pulling 1.2D only for the uh, fact that I, uh, I audit Bank of Stockton and get paid, and so I want to recuse myself from voting on this. But then let's take action on that one separately so that you can abstain from that okay. vote. Can so we do that now? Yeah, why don't we do I'll that now? I'll move that we approve 1.2D. Second. Great. Okay. Move it. Passes Thank with you. a 4 with the abstain from Mr. Stuccio. Okay, moving on, 1.2E. Is the 22000 the total cost that the city puts towards the library? I realize it, it's for five more hours, but all the other hours county library system is paying we're not putting anything towards that that's right for the okay portion that's, that's right that's our entire payment all right i just wanted to make sure 1.3 d or c oops yeah. sorry jumping in wait 
Okay. Which one was it? 1.3C. I think this is, I guess what I'm going to do, this is a request for future. This, when I read, this is transferring money from various places into the Street and Roads Fund for stuff we do that's not, is indirectly Street and Roads, in my mind. It's for like striping the streets, changing signs and all that stuff, correct? Yes. I get asked all the time by people, what do we do? with that money. And I know Ted has given us reports we fix X number of potholes and change Y number of signs and stuff, but we can't tell them where we did it or point it out to them. At some point it would be nice if we got some sort of a summary report. I don't care how many potholes we fixed. It would be nicer to know where they were fixed. In other words, did we do four blocks on some street and straighten it out so that we could send people to some places to see that their money's actually doing something. Because that's the question I get. The streets look like crap. What are you doing about it? His people are out there working, and I can't send them to places to show them what they're getting for. Right. I'd like to be able to do that. Well, it might be even nice to get some pictures, too. Yeah, yeah something. Some before and after shots. Right. And I think that if you look at the biggest dollar amount that we spend on street runs, roads, it typically goes into the project we bid out, the slurry seals and, and the overlays. And everybody uh, sees that. Th those they, they but see. you tell them that like a quarter of a million dollars is going to the street, to the patching and stuff, and mm -hmm. they're saying, and what are we getting for it? I'd like to be able to say, well, look at this, look at that, mm -hmm. look here. Right. We, we could take the words that we put in a map, or the words that we, we supply and, and put it into a map. Um, we're, we're switching to a new work order program that should make it a little easier to track that. Right now we just track number of potholes, but with this new program we should be able to track location okay. also that that's happening. Thank you. 1.3 D. Just a minute, I gotta turn my page. As I understand that this resolution is adding a street project to the budget to satisfy the state so we'll get some of this new SB1 gas tax money. Is Correct. that right? Are we wedded to that project? I mean, this is for the future, like later in 17, 18, or? Yeah, this was actually um, scheduled in our 18-19 uh, um, capital improvement program to be to be constructed. Um, we, we, we added it to okay. the, the budget this year to get it in there to, to start receiving that funding. But we're not limited to that project. Um, any project that's eligible that fits within the, the guidelines of that money um, we're, able, we're able to change okay. and, and use it as, as our priorities change. Do we have any idea yet how much money we're talking about from that SB1 thing? Yeah, we've got, um, I think it's 80, for 1718, we're looking at $100,000 approximately, and then 1819, around 266000 And then we're probably, okay. we're anticipating that's probably going to be the norm going forward, that two, 266 number. All right. But if something worse comes up, this just opens the door so that we get the money. We exactly. can be flexible where we what we do with it. Yeah, as our priorities okay. change, we can change, yep. All right, thank you. And then 1.4C. Does, did we do some Due diligence with this company. I mean, we're twenty-eight thousand five hundred bucks is a lot. Do we have a reasonable chance of getting a grant or two out of this? This is a hard one. Um, we've submitted a number of grants in the past by different ways. Um, we've done it in the past uh, as staff, and, and we put uh, grants together, and we're not successful. We have hired uh, consultants in the past, but those consultants were engineering type firm consultants. Again, not successful. Um, this is another chance. This is someone who probably has um, probably a little bit better grant writing and um, strategic uh, background in doing that. But even that being said, it's still a difficult thing to get grants, um, especially for a community like Ripon that is not, not delivering water, that has um, exceeding nitrate limits, 
uh, we're not a disadvantaged community. It just gets harder and harder to score higher on these type of projects. So uh, it, it is an effort to, to, to go uh, and, and try to do it. Uh, I think we went back to the one voice trip. That was some of the, the comments we were getting, like, have you, have you recently applied for these grants? And obviously the answer at that time was no. So this was a little bit of a follow-up to the one voice trip. Um, but again, a new company that, that may have some different experience than, than what we've tried in the past. Um, they were recommended to me by another city manager, and um, they, they've had a positive experience. I don't know if they got a lot of money out, out of it, but um, they were impressed with the, the strategic and the knowledge of the grants that this company provided. And since this is for water, is it coming out of the water out, fund? It would come out of the water fund. Okay. Can I add on to that? Because I was going to pull that, then I read further. If we don't get a grant, we don't pay anything, correct? Uh, no, we, we do. No, you're going to pay. Oh, because the way I read it was if they get the grant, they're successful, we pay. We pay it anyway? We pay their, we pay their fees uh, to prepare the grants. The, the $28,000 is what we would, would pay. Yeah, that's not the way that's, I read it. Thanks. That's where, that's where it well, yeah, because there was there was a chart in there, yeah. and I think I asked you a question because it seemed to be that their fee was somehow tied to the amount of correct. money they were applying for. That's correct. But I didn't read that you didn't pay it. It just looked to me like the more they asked, they tried to get, the more you had to pay them. Is that the way it works? Uh, that was why I asked that question. Yeah, about, well, how is. much are we asking for? Yeah, um, Elizabeth actually worked with them on, on their fee, so I, I'd have to go back and, and double Take check that. But the, the number in there is, is the number that they proposed to us um, that we would be responsible for. And they may have looked at those grants and, um, and figured out how much we'd be applying for already. So if they apply for a grant, for an example, up to $10,000, we pay them $1,000 whether they're successful or not. Yeah, I was assuming that was if they were successful. Right, successful or not. Um, but, okay. but you're right, now that you say that, it, it does, I think it is, what is the size of the grant that they were putting in? And, and these are both extremely complicated grants. I think that was the other part of the discussion with this firm. Um, they both take a, a lot of effort in, in putting these together. I know when we did a staff, it was a, a lot of effort. Okay. Um, and if council wants to, to pursue one of them, um, rather than both of them and see how it works out. I mean, that's a possibility, uh, too. Um, but. As, as far as the, the grants go, I think there probably is a lot of opportunity or a, a better opportunity right now for going after grants. Um, and I know I've talked to you before about talking with Peter I, with SSJD. I spoke to him today, and it sounds like they have maybe some other ideas and thoughts about how we should maybe or could pursue it with the uh, incentives that they have right now. Um, so maybe... I mean, I'm fine with them going after grant money. This was probably a, a good option. We're going to need the money one way or the other, to, no matter what the project is. But uh, it's probably worth having a sit down with SSJID and see what their thoughts are on how we could accomplish some other things. They maybe have some incentives as far as bringing other people into using that they didn't maybe think about before. So, no, it'd be great. Yeah, I don't have a problem with doing it because. Getting that surface water has been on <laughs> the radar in this town for 20 years, and if we, if, you know, if we can get it, we need to do it. And I'm will, I just wanted to make sure I understood what was going on. Okay, are we done with that? Yep. We can now vote on the balance of um, the. I'll move that we approve. 1.1B, 1.2A, 1.2E, 1.3C, 1.3D, and 1.4C. Oh, I gotta hit my. Where is it? Oh, I gotta get my arrow up there. Got it. I'll second that. Passes. Well, poor old Mike was away. Must have been sleeping. No, he could vote on that. I'm just going by what the screen said. You must not have voted before I hit I was the getting button. ready to vote. And do we need to redo the vote? Because he, I, 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 I vote. Is that a Yeah. I can. Uh, I abstain from one. I was away on the other. How do you choose the vote, How do I choose the vote? Yes or no? Yeah. I got it. 
fix it. Okay, I, I hit the button. He either he went too slow or I went too fast. I'm not sure where it actually happened. Yeah, you're still looking for the mouse. <laughs> okay. With that, that's the end of consent calendar, and we will open up public public hearing. Or you want to do what first? You want to move on to the discussion item? Okay, well, we're going to pass to and go to uh, discussion items, um, except the donation. I guess the PD chief, you're handling this? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Honorable City Council, members of the public. Uh, it is my honor tonight to bring forth a request to accept uh, a, an amount of $51,650 in donations to the police department uh, to purchase a new and fully upfitted uh, patrol unit. Uh, some background on this. Uh, in July of 2017, uh, local businessman and community member, Mr. Rick Van Unen, uh, contacted me uh, and provided an opportunity for local businesses and community members to make contribution and, and show support uh, to the police department. Uh, Mr. Van Unen expressed uh, his awareness of our department's aging patrol fleet and inquired about our department's strategy for implementation and replacement of its current vehicles. After a brief discussion, um, Mr. Vinion uh, advised his or expressed his intent to raise, fundraise enough money to make the purchase for a fully outfitted uh, patrol unit. Uh, at that point in time, he uh, uh, took it upon himself uh, to secure the over $51,000 in funds from our uh, bus local businesses and community members uh, to make that purchase. Uh, those funds have been uh, had provided to the city uh, to make that purchase uh, with the only condition that and the intention of the new uh, vehicle purchase would be in addition to any planned future purchases uh, of patrol units and would not supplant the city's current strategies for replacing its aging fleet. Uh, and I do have uh, Mr. Van Unen in the audience if you would like to ask him any questions or if he would like to make any comments. Um, I, well, I would just like to say thank you um, it's amazing, you know, that a citizen and citizens and businesses in this community, I guess it really does show you what type of community we have. And uh, I'm just, my hat's off to you and all the donors. What? Do you want to say something? Go ahead, Mike. I don't see it up here. Yeah, sorry. So um, all I want to say is that I, I didn't know Rick before this, and I don't think you knew me before the first responder appreciation day that we put on and um, you're such a valuable asset to the community Rick the things that you've done the thing you brought to, to my committee uh, the things we put together and you're just an honorable person and you don't stop and I, I just think that you should get a lot of credit for doing this you just continue doing all kinds of things that a lot of people in the community don't know and I think they need to know that because you're, you're a good person for doing it and the community certainly is um, I'm um, doing well because of it. So all I can do is thank you. So we need to vote on this, right? To accept no. the, or no? Check already cleared, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but don't we have to accept the donation? Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. You, 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 you I will move that we accept the donation. I'll second that. Okay, well, let me get my computer going. Here we go. All right, Mike. I didn't. <laughs> Are we getting for the vote? Okay. And it passes. What? Well, it, dang it. Leo says yes, but he was too slow. It's, it's I can't a, differentiate between the moving box and the yes box. Because by you're, the time I figured it out, you took it away. Yes, yeah, because you're usually the mover. You never have to I worry know, about it. I know. That's what I said. I'm trying to. We got it. Dean's, Dean's afraid if he doesn't close it out, he'll forget what I, to do. I was afraid you were going to vote no anyway, so that's why I did it. I, I mean, I really want to thank Rick for what he's for what he's done. I just have one comment, and that is, I hope we're careful about the timing for the purchase of that vehicle because we've been working on spreading them out so that we don't have a bunch at the same time all hitting the, the end of life at the same time. We got six of them from 2004, which means at some point we're going to have to triple how many cars we buy in a year. 
So if, and we've already bought three this year, and maybe if we're going to buy two next year, we might add his to the list and get three then. But I just don't want to saddle the council with a problem 10 years down the road where all of a sudden we're right back where we were when I first got on the council, and that is we had a bunch of cars all at the same time that were falling apart. I think uh, City Administrator Warner and I have sat down and tried to strategize the, the best way to replace the fleet, especially when we had so many cars purchased in 2003, 2004. Uh, part of that was due to the take-home car program. Some of that was due to the increase in police officers hired. Uh, but we really tried to, to stretch the uh, implementation of the new patrol vehicles at two per year. Some of those, some of the dates for the years of the vehicle don't actually match the year purchased because of model years and so forth when, when those orders are made. Uh, we tried to do two per year. There was one year we did do three, and that was an administrative car that the lieutenant drives. Uh, but we tried to do it the best way we can, and I'm more than open for any suggestions on how we can uh, displace the burn uh, out uh, for future, not only chiefs of police, but city council. I have no problem. I that's my point. I want the program we've been operating under to continue because it is. It's spreading them out so that we're not going to have that problem. And you're doing a good job. I just want you to keep doing it. Okay, moving on. We're, we're moving back to public hearing. Uh, community Development Block Grant and Home Program. I'm going to guess that's... Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. fellow council members. Um, this is a public hearing tonight, and there is a recommended action in the staff report for you. But uh, as you recall, last meeting we went through some CDBG projects and priorities, and the council did have a desire to actually reallocate some of the funds that we had allocated for an alley project to, um, I think, resurfacing the uh, parking lot at the senior center and uh, finishing up some handicap ramps and sidewalk uh, areas over there uh, on Pine and Elm off of Pine and Elm over by Ripon High School. So those are the two projects that uh, we've reallocated the funding to, and um, that's what's in the staff report this evening for you to, uh, to um, vote on this evening is to reallocate those. And like I said, this is a public hearing, so you, we do have to open it up to any public comment. Anybody from the public? With that, we'll close public hearing. City Council, any questions? Does anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion? Accept the uh, recommended by staff. Second. Hit the button. Now be patient, Tricia. I don't. It, oh, hey, who hey, was it? You did that? It's the mayor. I did it. I'm in charge, dude. Remember uh, that. Just remember, you're within arm's reach. <laughs> I got lectured. I got lectured by Lisa before that I should be controlling the vote, not them. So that's why. Yeah, I just got a little quick-handed. Okay. Moving on, let's see. Well, you're going to have to get I remember, dude, I got the hammer. Modification to the recycling facility. Is this Mr. Zuber's report? No, well, I thought this was Leo's report. Okay, I'm sorry, Ted. I didn't want to take your firecracker away from you. Oh, Go ahead. Not a problem. Um, before you tonight, uh, as most of you are aware, the uh, city of Ripon runs its re part of its big part of its recycling program is uh, ran with a partnership between the school district and uh, American Recycling, our recycling center located at the Nestle's parking lot. Um, we've been running it for quite some time. It's been very successful. Uh, as part of that, we've uh, last year we diverted 530 tons of uh, recyclable material, including cardboard, newspapers, glass. Uh, lots of other uh, other items uh, in the partnership that we have with the schools, <coughs> parent uh, parent uh, faculty clubs. Uh, they've raised between uh, they raise between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year, um, uh, taking care of the facility, uh, uh, compacting the cardboard on the on the in the evenings and on the weekends. Um, currently, the program has gotten so successful, so large that we're having a tough time. Uh, keeping a handle on it. it we need to uh, modify it, uh, uh, add a new compactor, uh, increase the size of the storage area um, for the, uh, the cardboard, 
And uh, so part, part of that, uh, the modifications we're proposing is to purchase a new compactor uh, that uh, has twice the hopper capacity along with a conveyor system to safely load the cardboard into the container. There's been some, some con safety concerns with the, the operation um, as it's, uh, as it's uh, handled now with potential of you know, somebody getting hurt. This would alleviate that by having a closed hopper and uh, the uh, um, conveyor belt to safely remove the cardboard. Um, we'd also need to upgrade the electrical service to a three-phase uh, service to accommodate the new compactor in the new location. Um, the uh, proposal is to really re relocate the uh, facility to the west end of the Nestle's parking lot and reconfigure the layout to improve traffic uh, circulation. Um, we've got a, a plan um, as part of the agenda uh, it kind of shows the proposed layout, kind of a conceptual proposed layout, but uh, we, we believe that uh, uh, by fencing it, uh, we'll be able to get the circulation, but also uh, by gating it, we'll be able to close it off at night, uh, which will help us with some of the illegal dumping that we've been um, experiencing out there. Um, Would you... Uh I, I'm, I'm looking at this. Would you gate the whole mm -mm. facility no. or just no, the right. drops just, just part? Just the back. See what's okay. this sledding thing? No, keep, go the other go way. Right. Oh, okay, okay, I see. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, okay. the, the plan is to have two two gates uh, for the circulation. We have a one, one way in, one way out to help improve the uh, operation, uh, the logistics of, of the whole, whole process, relocate the bins so they're all in that area, um, uh, close, uh, open it up at 7 in the morning, uh, uh, try to close them at 10 o'clock at night. <clears throat> it seems like that's when a lot of the illegal dumping happens is at night. Uh, we're also proposing that we um, uh, install high-definition cameras that are linked to the city's uh, the police department's uh, camera, um, citywide camera monitoring recording system so that we can have access, access to uh, access to those uh, cameras and the recording devices so that we can we can easily we don't have to go out and pull them out like with the the, uh, the camera system we have now so um, we're, we're recommending to the City Council um, that they approve the modifications the cost uh, uh, estimated cost is a hundred and forty six thousand um, seven hundred dollars at this time uh, that's our that's uh, our proposed or our estimations um, the uh, the school district. We've we've talked with the school parent faculty groups about um, partnering with the cost of the compactor, which is approximately fifty thousand of that one hundred and forty six thousand, um, uh, because they they have uh, uh, they're going to benefit from it because it's going to work faster uh, and uh, help them out, and possibly even gain more more uh, uh, more money from from their end of it. So. Um, that's so all I have. I'd be what more was happy your to response? The proposal is that, the, and they've accepted it. We had a meeting with the P parent faculty club representatives. Is to split the cost. The city would pay twenty five thousand. They would pay twenty five. Their contribution would be spread over five years, five thousand a year. That would that's just come out of their suggest. proceeds yeah. and come back to the city. That's a good idea. I like that idea. Yeah. So, Ted, I have a question. Um, okay. So, this is taking up that whole back, isn't it? I mean, this is a huge area. It's it's not the not the full back uh, portion, but it's about uh, about a third of the parking lot. But I mean, it it, it looks it like goes it goes it goes across. from where like your glass bin is now all the way to Second Street, the way it looks. It goes to the no. overpass. Yeah, the yeah. overpass. It's all wasted yeah. space. I mean, it's a whole back space. No, I think that I think that's great because now we have better parking up front for the uh, multimodal. So th this will clean it up. I, I'm glad to see that. And I was kind of concerned when we talked about timing because I go there three times a week, and you're saying seven to ten. That's I think that's plenty of time. And weekends the same thing, correct? Because that's when a lot of people go there. So yeah, I think it's, it's, and, I think uh, it's a great idea. Leo kind of answered this question, but you know, I've been out there several times and when it's overpacked and you got kids up there on top of piles and piles of cardboard and you know and well and they've even slipped into the machine and it, it's very dangerous so with this new proposal the safety is going to be much better i hope oh yes uh, this, this this should alleviate any 
potential. Yeah, the, new, the new machine, if you are familiar with the machine that's there, three sides have a beveled edge on it. The new machine, all four sides have a beveled edge. A person can't get in there at all. And that's when he was talking about the, the uh, conveyor belt. There will be a conveyor belt. You'll load it on the bottom. It'll be hauled up okay. and dumped in. Yeah. Well, that and in order for works. a person to go in there, the machine has to be turned off, and you have to open an access panel. And, and so, but I don't think we're going to have a problem because the problem we have now is the opening is smaller than some of the cardboard. The new machine is literally twice as big, the opening so that even a refrigerator box will fall in. So, I mean, realistically, we're lucky nobody ever got hurt out there. You know what I'm saying? There, there have been a couple. A couple it's, it's been, calls. <laughs> it's been with, with adults. So, I mean, that, people that are actually it, working for, it. Yeah. 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 So that's, a, you know, it's a safety issue, too. So, you know, we can, if we want to justify it, I mean, anyway. Okay, so uh, we'll call for a... A motion on that? Or are you guys done talking about it? I'm okay. I'll make a motion. We approve this. I, I like the plan. I'll second that. Uh, in the morning? Yeah. All right. I'll text you. Don't close okay. it yet. Okay, you guys. You got to Unless you go oh, and close it. Otherwise, I'll cut you off. Don't do yeah. that. It's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it says right there all votes have been cast. Why didn't I just read that? <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Well, there's, <laughs> quite, there's quite a few reasons why. <laughs> Daniel, I have five of Passes 5-0. With that, we'll move on to bicycle. bicycle, pedestrian, and safe routes to school program. And uh, that must be Chief. I uh, know that'll be me, James. No, it's Mr. Mayor. James is the safety oh, guy. Here? Okay, sorry. It's the guy that paints lines on the street. Mr. Oh. Peace. <laughs> All those pink marks. In the <laughs> All right. So, at the end of this month, the SJCOG board will officially announce the uh, competitive call for projects for the Measure K Bike Ped, Safe Route to School, and the Smart, Gro uh, Smart Growth Incentive Program. There is a total of $19.8 million in funding available through that program, and that's for fiscal year 1718 through 2122. Um, in addition to that competitive call for projects, the city will be receiving approximately $53,000 in non competitive funds, um, and that's just population based, allocated every two years. Um, these non-competitive funds can be used for um, any eligible project within the program uh, or you can use them as leverage for um, any one of the competitive grants that you may be going after. Um, I won't run through all the examples um, of the type of projects, but the majority of them are improvements to existing bikeways and walkways, um, safe route to school um, projects and uh, improve the safety of children, um, secure bicycle parking um, projects. Um, you can see the number of those that, uh, that are there in the staff report, um, educational programs. Um, the final guidelines for the program, they're expected to be adopted by the COG board at the end of this month as well. Um, since I wrote this staff report, there actually have been some changes um, to, the, to the draft guidelines. Um, and one of those changes is uh, that the city would receive approximately $20,000 in um, grant application assistance so we'd be able to put that toward a consultant to help us with uh, the writing of this grant or staff time uh, to submit with the application. Um, also, the, the, the COG staff is recommending that four of that $19.8 million um, be allocated toward uh, municipalities with a population of less than $200,000. This is just going to kind of make us a little bit more competitive with um, Stockton. Um, those projects do have to be under $500,000, though. Um, and then that application deadline, which in the staff report shows as November 30th, has been pushed back to December 15th. So staff, we identified um, an eligible project that's uh, currently included in our city bicycle master plan. Um, it, it basically closes a gap in our class one bike path along the Stanislaus River. Um, the, the, the start of the path is on the west side of the um, uh, Highway 99. It's right near our sewer ponds. Um, the path would go along the river and then underneath the, the railroad crossing and underneath the freeway and connect into the paved area just just on the west side of the freeway or east side of the freeway close to where the bike bridge is, is currently located. Is it going to go along the existing dirt path that's there now? Yeah, there's an existing dirt kind of rock path um, that we would just go do. Kind of dangerous, but I, I, be I ride that, yeah. Yeah, we'd go in there, do a little bit of grading um, and, and put asphalt in there. So right it'll now. go underneath the... 
the highway, the, the highway yeah, the, 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 and the, the bridge structure and the there. Yeah, the railroad. I, mean, structure I, I go there anyway, but it's just mm-hmm. people have made their own trail because they've driven down there so much. That that's 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 great. You know, yeah. I'm looking at this diagram here, though, and it shows these dots that where the proposed is, but I can't really see them on here or, or where they're going to add that on. It looks all solid to me. I'm glad and, you said that because I said the same thing. It, um, is that the first exhibit or the second exhibit? Well, it's the one that's... Uh, the legend that has... The one dots. that has the Bru- whole city map on there. Right, it's the blue... It's yeah, solid so, green. I couldn't see any green dots. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are those are dashed... Um, if, if you were to zoom in, you'd have to zoom in quite a bit uh, to, to identify. Oh, so they're included in what's already there. I'm just trying to see where they were going to add on and, and where we. It's yeah. basically from here to here. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah, that second exhibit I put in there, I um, I, I changed the colors to to show the green area as the. Better keep going. Not to be constructed. Yeah. See, it's going to be the green, so it starts uh-huh. over here and then goes over. On the yeah. second exhibit, yeah, you have yeah. we're showing the um, sort of the part in the park behind um, the Army Corps park there, the yellow line, um, and that's showing up as existing Class One bike path. Part part of that is paved, part of it's not. Right, the upper or sort of northeastern portion of the loop, the loop part is not, not paved. Correct. Um, so are, were you talking about paving the whole the entire green between the connection to the bike bridge back to Stockton by the sewer ponds? Yeah, it, it, what we would want to do is, is to, to pave that entire green section that you see there. Uh, that would Even be the loop the on the east end? Yeah, if, if, if yes. Okay. Um, my recommendation, I guess, I, I don't know, I, sort of like your, your last part of natural oak trees and things, and it just kind of seems strange to me to pave all the ways through there. I mean, if you re- if you really want to get from, say, Stockton Avenue to the east side of, north northeast side of 99, you're going to go up and take the Main Street Road if you have a, a road bike. If you, I mean, if you're really using it as a uh, um, you know, pa- safe pathway, I'm assuming that's probably the way you're going to go. My opinion is the area down th- along the river is more of a nature trail, and you're just going to take in the scenery, and I think it takes away from that if you pave that section it's my opinion i would rather see it as an improved gravel or you know a, um, s- sort of similar to what's up in the upper part of the army corps park there um, versus being paved all the way through there or if you or at least leave the uh the s- most southerly portion down in the oak trees down there along the river as just a unpaved portion if you yeah, we we definitely look at doing that, just connecting the paved areas and, and not kind of continuing that loop around there. Yeah, at least to leave some portion where you can just walk through and not have bikes zooming through at 30 miles an hour. Sure. Just to leave it a little bit more natural. Yeah. yeah. That'd be my only uh, suggestion. Any other questions? Call for a motion. Well, um, well I got a this proposal will be under 500,000. Correct. Right. Didn't I say it was, see where the estimate was like 320,000 or something? Yes, right now it's 350. We would we would want to use that non-competitive portion um, as a leverage. That would just help us be more competitive with this. Um, the more non-grant funds you use, you, you obviously score more well, higher. Yeah, I was at a committee meeting yesterday where we talked about this. It's sort of non-competitive, but it is competitive because there was a lot of discussion about set, setting some kind of minimum score you're going to have to get in order to get funded. Because the last time they did this, it turned into sort of a giveaway. They had X amount of money and Y amount of applications. They happened to be pretty much equal, so they said, fine, here's your money. And there were several of us who said, you keep doing that, pretty soon nobody's going to send in an application. They're just going to put four numbers down and take their chances. So I'm glad, I was glad that they're giving us the consultant seed money because we, this is a good project and we need to go after it. And I think it's got what it takes. My other comment though is this, what this $19 million is the first of three 
chunks of money that are going to come out between now and probably about 2035. Because there's $65 million out of Measure K that has to go to buy Compad, and so far, zero <coughs> has gone. And so they have the next 20 years to spend $65 million. This is 20, leaves them 45 to go. So we're going to get to sh uh, get shots at this at least two more times. And I hope we'll start thinking about other things to do in, in town uh, by looking at what other cities do and, and that sort of thing to try to get some of this money. Because in my own mind, things that I've seen and heard, we might be able to do some things downtown. We're going to have to get creative about it. But we need to start thinking about it because we're going to get some, there's going to be some more shots at this. Bike yeah. path all the way down Stockton? Well, I don't know. And the other That's thing that we free. talked about, and we're going to have to talk about it at the board level, is right now the rule says the whole $19.8 million is available, and if cities under $200,000 do not manage to qualify to spend all $4 million, that $4 million goes into the pool for the over 200,000 people. The discussion came up, why can't you hold it back so that you create more incentive for the smaller towns. Now, by smaller towns, just so everybody understands, <laughs> all the towns in San Joaquin County are under 200,000 except Stockton. So that what that basically means is the only town we don't have to compete with is Stockton. Um, but the idea is if, if you want to give them a shot, don't keep taking the money away when they don't apply. That didn't get resolved, but it might be brought up at at the uh, board level. So in other words, if $2 million worth of applications come in, next time there'd be $6 million available for the little guys rather than the four. So we need to get in the mode of thinking about this because it's, it's out there. Okay, call for a vote or motion. I'll make a motion to take staff recommendation on second. Be patient. I am. I'm waiting. I got it down right now. Okay. Well, you guys are getting. See, you guys are getting nervous now. You're voting faster. I know that. You did a good job there. There you go. Okay. With that, uh, moving on to reports, Chief. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Honorable City Council. I just have two brief items. Um, I'm sorry that Mr. Van Union had to leave, but uh, I wanted to personally thank him for uh, donating uh, the money to have uh, Rob Pincus from Integrity Consistency Efficiency Training uh, come uh, to the police department this, this past week and provide training to 11 of our officers over two days. Uh, during those two days, it was a defensive intuitive uh, uh, firearms defense, uh, over 600 rounds of pistol ammunition and 500 rounds of uh, rifle rounds were fired uh, down at our range by each officer, uh, <laughs> learning new techniques and honing their skills with uh, their firearms. Uh, the second thing is, uh, just to br uh, bring it to the public's attention, uh, we put out something through our uh, community outreach programs uh, this afternoon, uh, but we have had a uh, sharp increase in auto burglaries. And uh, just last night we had 11 in our community. Uh, just to put that in perspective, in 2015 we had nine for the year. In 2016 we had 13 for the year. And so far this year, uh, including the 11 from last night, we've had 26 for the year. And we're still three months to go. So we're just encouraging people to be aware of the surroundings, uh, secure their property, uh, not in their vehicle, but uh, in, in their homes, uh, not leave anything of value inside their vehicles overnight or for extended periods of time. Uh, most of these uh, burglaries are occurring, um, other than last night, in commercial areas, at restaurants, uh, or public areas such as parks and so forth. Uh, last night was a little bit of an oddity, but uh, we still want people to be aware of the surroundings. Okay, moving on, Mr. Ted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just one, one item I want to report on our water uh, usage for August. Uh, we were at 17.6% reduction from compared to 2013. Um, and which brings our uh, average or 12 month average at to 30.13%. Um, the city, con city staff continues to monitor groundwater levels 
Um, the groundwater levels are actually uh, coming back up um, just in the last three months. We've raised a half a foot uh, on an average across, across really? the board. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Kin. Yes, I, I have a couple items as well. Um, as you all know, the uh, affordable house at 439 South Acacia is, is finished up. The, the last uh, invoice was on the um, consent calendar this evening. It is actively up for sale at this point. We are accepting applications for qualified buyers. Uh, that actually comes to a close on Monday, the 18th, at 5.30 p.m. Um, we'll be accepting applications up to that point. Uh, we will then review them to make sure they do qualify uh, for the house, and we will be holding the um, actually the lottery drawing for that house on uh, Thursday, September 28th at 6 p.m. Um, I would imagine here in the, in the uh, council chambers we'll do that. So we will select probably a, a, a total of five buyers because sometimes they do fall out, so we'd move to the next person on the list. So that should be closing up here at the end of the month. I would imagine a 30-day escrow or so, so that should be uh, being occupied. Um, and a second item of interest that the council might have is we do have a couple housing projects that are in the North Point area that will be coming before the Planning Commission, the October meeting, and then hitting uh, City Council at the November City Council meeting. So um, I have a couple uh, draft development agreements that are being finished up and you guys should see those shortly here. I'll get those out in an email to you guys so you can kind of go through those. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a holler. I'd be happy to answer any questions on those for you. These new developments are gonna be subject to the, no, the 10% affordable housing requirement, right? Correct, and they also are subject to the 3% uh, growth cap that you guys have in place. Okay. James? Yeah, just quickly, I wanted to update the Stockton Avenue parking lot project is, is moving along. Um, we're, we're anticipating that we should be parking in about two weeks uh, back in the parking lot. So, it's looking really nice. You guys went quick changes. on that. That's, that's nice. I was over there every day and hounded them. That's why. <laughs> well, thank you, Dean. We'll say I did see you out there. Except the week I was in Arizona. <laughs> but you called in. <laughs> Uh, just Tom. a report. Yeah, just a quick report out on the closed session held prior to tonight's meeting. The council got information from their benefits consultant on health and dental costs for next year, uh, and gave direction to staff on that item. And then uh, the council discussed uh, assuming lead agency status for the proposed Diamond Pet Food expansion project, and uh, gave staff direction on that item as well. That's all I have. Thank you. I have, no, I have nothing to report. Oh, darn it. Jay? Nothing to report. Darn. Nothing. Come on, say something. I've said enough. Okay, good. Daniel? I always have something to say. Um, <laughs> I was at the uh, SSJID board meeting today, and uh, Sam um, announced his retirement. So that was uh, interesting news. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've been waiting for it, I think, for a long time coming, but it uh, finally happened today. Mm -hmm. He's going to He'll be officially done in March after his uh, three or so months of accrued um, vacation time are used, but he's going to probably be done with actual work by the end of the year. So just a heads up there. And then, uh, as always, thank you to the members of the public who are here to uh, listen to what we have to say today. Thanks. Vice Mayor? Um, I would just like to make one comment. For the last two, three years, I've been getting, you know, yelled at by citizens you know, about the drive over the overpass, you know, what, what does that overpass actually cost? I, I drive over 10 times. A, what? No, the no. first street. Second street, oh. Second street <laughs> overpass? Yeah. Is that what it's called? It's the Main yeah. Street Overpass. Second. Main Street Overpass. So anyway, now that it's beautifully fixed and working well, I haven't had anybody call me and call, compliment on what a great job we did <laughs> fixing that. You should call them and say, did you see what we've done? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You get it. It's yeah. it's kind of a joke trick mm -hmm. thing, but you know, week. obviously it's Caltrans. But anyway, they with did, that, they did do a good job. We'll end. The, they did a great. It's really nice. I was shocked. Uh, nice. Okay. Oh, okay, so now we have to close. So you have to close. Close out. And how do we do? How do you do that? Can't we just do it without the silly thing? We only have one thing to do. Orally? Oh.
Do what you're told, Leo. No, it's no fun. Wait, what do I do? You close out. Do I close out here, too? We have the whole thing? You just close out? That's what I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing it right or not. What's my thing? Where in the heck's that little button for? Was it PW4, my name? I got it. I don't think you have to go all the way. Young lady, are you from Ribbon High? No. Where? Oh, Lincoln in Stockton? Yeah. Oh, and you're Check here for one. your government work for school? <laughs> oh, I was wondering because... You know, now we got to worry about what Stockton thinks about us. <laughs> you came all the way over here to go to this meeting? Yeah, how come mine's not connected? Yeah, What's my password? Like, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I got the answer. I just heard... Oh. Um, so she got inventive. She figured, you know what? They get done. <laughs> well, the, the council, the council meeting is like actually over, no so call. now we're Good. moving on to another meeting. So you're really done if if you want to go. <laughs> Not that you we're kicking you out since you're the only person here. But. <laughs> All right. Okay. Did you fix me already? While I was doing yeah, my yeah, gossip we're, we're rolling. All right. Okay, so what's this? We'll open the Ripon Redevelopment Successor Agency meeting of Tuesday, September 12th. Roll call, Lisa. Director Daniel DeGraff. Here. Jake Parks. Here. Leo Zuber. Here. Vice Chairman Mike Rasusha. Present. Chairman Dean Uecker. Here. And how public come, discussion. How come says he's absent. Who? Everybody else was present, but Dean showed absent. I believe you're looking at the minutes. How, who's running this thing, me or you? <laughs> Art? <laughs> seeing, hey, seeing nobody from the public, I'm going to not read the public. Yeah. So approval of the minutes. So approved. Second. I can't pick up the vote. Where is it? It's not on. It's, it, it's not working. The girls are. Uh, there oh, we go. There we go. See, now that wasn't my fault. Yeah, I Whoops, now I hit it probably wrong. Boy, Jake, I, mean, no. I already got it. I'm done. Uh, I'm going to vote no one of these times. <laughs> they have see what happens. Happens. <laughs> Only got Jake. Mike. Blow the chairman. Mike. Says all votes have been counted. <laughs> well, maybe it's just. Did you vote? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jake, Something's Mike. wrong. Yeah, and then everybody else. And Dean, have you voted yet? I voted three times. <laughs> I didn't hit the close. I don't know how that happened. Okay, 5 0 passes. All right, now we are moving on to consent calendar. Consent calendar. I'll move to approve. Second. Oh, wait. Give me my thing. I... They're not. Uh, Yay. Oh, wait, 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 you gotta... oh, oh, I was going to be like, wait a second. Wait, no. That's not how this works, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did we vote? Yep. And we're done. We don't need a motion. The chair is yeah. just on it. Go, bang, yeah. we're done. If Dean would get on it. Ooh, that hurt my ears. I think Daniel's getting a little cocky for his time over there. <laughs> Should we just leave it here? Oh, yeah. All right. We're good. Yeah, so just give me a text tomorrow. Uh, well, I got something first thing, but I should be done about nine. So. All right. When I read that line, Oh.